and welcome to Perspectives. Uh, quick reminder, if you want to contact us, my Twitter handle, Facebook handle, and my email ID will be on the screen. Unfortunately, we're not, we're not live tonight, so I won't be able to interact with you during the show. Um, Pakistan is not a country which reads much, and with every passing day, the number of books being published in Pakistan is just dropping down. But we're still making some fantastic coffee table books. We're writing, we're still writing great books. We are not much of a reading society anymore, but we still consume information. We may not see a lot of art, culture, poetry, music happening on the streets, but we still see people with great artistic capability. Most of the professions, most of the artistic professions have been the forte of men in Pakistan because culturally and maybe historically our women have not taken those actions. I've said this repeatedly on the show over the over the past couple of decades. Women have women have fought it out. Women have struggled hard. Women have tried hard. They've tried so hard that they're actually ahead of the men now. They've left men behind. Um, my fellow men hate me half the time when I say this, but I think Pakistani men are losing their wit. Pakistani men are losing their creative capability. And that's not because they're incapable, because they're overwhelmed. They are bullied by the women of this country. And rightly so, why not? This is 2013. Pakistani women are dynamic, dashing, smart, well-spoken, well-dressed, traveled, educated, and they definitely have more capability than our men. I am open to abuse on this statement, but I stand by my opinion, and I think it is right. And the show tonight will probably prove that I'm right. Because we actually have a guest which has, who has a scary name. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm holding a book in my hand, which is called Kam Sukhan. Uh, Kam Sukhan comes from Persian. And um, it, it, it is a word which proves the strength of Urdu, which is um, you know, inheriting a lot of words from Turkish and, and Persian. Kam Sukhan means someone who's flesh. And when I asked the compiler of this book, the publisher of the book, and she said, well, these are images, they, speak, they say nothing, but yet they say so much. That's the title of Kamsukhan. Uh, it's a book which is a celebration of a jewelry project on, its, uh, on completion of its, of its nine years. And it celebrates the photographic work, the artistic work of nine photographers. The publisher, compiler of this book, Ms. Kiran Aman, Thank you very much for being here. Thank Have you. I narrated it right? Have I made any mistakes? No mistakes. <laughs> no mistakes. So I've done well, yes. even though I'm not as smart as you, as I've said it myself. Let me come down a second. Uh, my next guest, who is um, a fashion portrait photographer and has a scary name, is Miss Adila Badshah. <laughs> Thank you, Dila, for being here. Why Thank the Badshah, if I may quickly ask? Um, it's a family name, so it's just been there for... The family of kings? Yes, most likely. <laughs> and and with, the, with the queen right in the middle. Basically. <laughs> Basically. Thank you very much Adila, for being here. Uh, a photographer, photojournalist, somebody who does news and lifestyle and wedding photography. We'll talk about that in, in great detail. Ms. Intia Sayyid. And she, thank you very much for being here. Thank Taking you time for out. Um, And a lovely young lady, when I asked if she's also a photographer, she said, no, I'm not a photographer. I'm an artist. And she said she works with photo, film, video. And I said, what's your specialty? What kind of work should you do? And she says, why I'm experimental and controversial. <laughs> well, let's see how controversial Ms. Shalali Jameel. Thank you very much for being here. Taking time out. Thanks for having me. Kiran, I'd like to start with you. Sure. Tell us about the book. Um, it, it, first of all, thank you. This is a beautiful book. Um, <coughs> why this compilation and what message are you trying to give out uh, with this book? Please. Okay. I'll start with uh, why. Um, in 2005, I was in Dhaka, mm -hmm. and I came across this wonderful book by Anwar Hussain. He's one of the one of the best mm -hmm. uh, photographers. And I bought the book, and I went through it. And he had uh, compiled his work, and he had shot women across the world, mm -hmm. different aspects of women. And I looked at that book. I was a jewelry designer then. Sure. And I saw it and I said, when I celebrate nine years of KFJ, 
I will take out a book like this. What I didn't know is that I would use nine female photographers to do that. Or what the, I knew it would be about women, but I didn't know it would be about the essence of a woman versus different aspects across the world or Pakistani mm -hmm. women in different genres and workplaces. So, um, when the nine years were coming up, we, uh, Adida also worked with me at Marking, mm -hmm. which is my publishing company. And um, I asked her to arrange for, we set up a criteria. There was okay. a brief and Adida chose. What was the criteria? Let me ask. The criteria was that we didn't want to, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to pigeonhole anyone. I wanted women from all walks of life, photographers mm -hmm. who are doing different types of work. Right. And the criteria was that I wanted them to uh, see what they see in themselves as the essence. Okay. Or other women, as you can see in this. So this is really book. women by women. Women by women. And and you think do you, do you think Pakistani men or global men see women differently from what women see themselves as? I have um, also worked with male photographers uh -huh. done other three books on photography, and they're all men. So it's not like I'm missing about women only, but. Um, I think that Adnyoka uh, perspective, you know, I don't think I wanted their perspective. Imagine what the photography would have been like. You know, some... <laughs> I didn't mean that in any wrong way. What do you mean by you didn't want men's perspective and you imagine what would be like? And I'm trying to imagine and I don't see a problem. <laughs> that's, a, that's a highly unfair statement. I, I'm going to hold you to that. Adila, um, I'm, I'm looking at your pictures here, and uh, you've used beautiful veils in each one of these photographs, and the lovely women. Um, why the why, why the veils, and and what are you trying to trying to say here? Uh, and I hope uh, we can show some of the pictures while we talk about it. Please, Adila. Well, basically, my work is uh, titled Hunkrit, as you must have read already, mm -hmm. and it's. Um, the veil represents an emotional strength that each right. woman has. Um, and every woman as being part of a family or being part of a household, there's something that she keeps hidden from everyone. She, the dark she, side. Well, if you'd like to call it. But <laughs> it's, it's, let's say um, she is strong for her family. You know, she, she's selfless in a certain way. She has to take care of so many things. She's True. a multitasker. So she hides herself behind this veil of elegance. She keeps her emotions aside from everything, from everyday work that she does, from who she is. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just representing the strength. Okay, w w w the moment we say the word veil, hmm. it has a negative connotation. And the world sees the Pakistani woman hiding or being forced to hide well, behind a veil. I agree. So that's the reason I actually I agree, which invoked is that why, question. Which is why I titled the word Ghungat, because Ghungat is a bridal veil, specifically. Right. And that veil, if you notice, is transparent in most cases. It's to look pretty and elegant and beautiful. It's not supposed to look like parda, which, th I mean, that was the purpose. It's, it's, it's not really hiding away it's or not. concealing it, it, yourself. You see, it's because wherever, wherever you see a veil is usually in, in, in bridal terms, when, you know, someone's getting married, it's, it's, it's this beauty. You're hiding mm -hmm. an element. You're hiding, it makes it almost look ethereal. And that was the point. I mean, I mean, I, the, 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 the mystery of the woman. If Basically, yeah. In, in the, in, in, in in the Ghunga tent. Yeah. And, a, and a bride is just not completely revealed until exactly, she's revealed. Exactly. Well, fantastic work. Insya, age. Why age in your work? Um, uh, because it's my grandmother. Um, Mashallah. The title of my work is Unabridged and Unpublished. Okay. And the idea, and I thank Kiran for this, uh, is because because of this book and because of this project, I ended up um, sort of exploring the relationship between my grandmother that I observe as my grandmother mm -hmm. and her only son who happens to be my father. Um, I feel that there's, there are lots of unspoken things between them and through these portraits that I took of my grandmother through um, my phone, mm -hmm. these are all phone portraits. Oh, wow. So I haven't used um, a big camera for this oh, wow. as I use otherwise. Um, except for... And then I made my father basically, thanks, um, I made my father write a letter to my grandmother, um, which I think would help him, I don't know if it would help them 
sort of reconnect or sort of cut down on that gap that that there is i feel uh, but it's more like i was trying to find answers for myself more than trying to just like a person that passes yeah. yeah yeah um have people seen these pictures uh, and i mean have you, i'm sure they have yeah. but have you heard of their reactions what what do people say when they it was really uh, funny when my grandmother saw this because she had no idea that these were going in a book so when the book came out is when i showed her the book and she was flipping through and when she came to the picture of her hand is when she said that oh that looks like my hand so i said but that is you in the previous two pictures also um so it was just really interesting and it it also it also made me realize that she's really old now she's 80 plus mashallah um and and the fact that it takes time for her to register things um, um am i allowed to read something from this yeah. letter um it, I'm just going to take one line. These are my father's words. Yes. Uh, Mr. Jamil Sayed. Yes. Uh, and says, to be loved because I love you, isn't it really strange? I live with you and yet I miss you so much. The beautiful words. I live with you and yet I miss you so much. And, um, and, and I, I, I want to thank you for this because it leaves a thought in my mind that we just sort of take for granted people who are right next to us. Mm -hmm. And we assume, you know, I'm always with you. So I, neither do I have to show my affection to you, yeah. and nor do I have to say it. Yeah. And in the process, what we, what 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 really happens to us is we miss a beautiful part of life. And um, and it's just, it's interesting that you mentioned this because this one person who was there at the launch of the book, mm -hmm. uh, she was doing a piece and she did like a review of the launch and the book. Uh, she actually messaged me, emailed me the next day, and mm -hmm. said that she actually mailed her mother after going wow. through the wow. book and. She said that I said things to her that I hadn't said to her in a very long time, and in return, her mother said things to her that the mother hadn't told her. So I think it became more verbal as opposed to taking things for granted. So oh, fantastic, Shilali. Yeah. Um, women in the cinema, big time sensuality. You just Did say, you say you women in the cinema. Oh, yeah. women and the camera. My apologies. No worries. I'm trying to speed reading. I'm so sorry. Tell us what you're doing. Yeah? And I hope, and I hope we'd be, you know, we're showing the pictures as we go forward. Yeah, yeah. Please, what are we doing? Well, I, I thought you what, began, what began it. There was an image that was taken by Shilali Sharma. Yeah. 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 Okay. Myself. Okay. Which is maybe one of the reasons I would classify myself more as an artist than a photographer, because I think artists are allowed to do things like appropriate well, other work, whereas photographers generally tend to take the images that they're going to show. Um, so anyway, what began the project for me even before Adila or Karen um, invited me to participate in it was this picture, which I just kind of fell in love with, and I found it to be really cinematic and haunting and. Somehow revealing, but I didn't know who she was, and I didn't know quite what she was revealing. And you still don't know. And I, I still don't know, and okay. I didn't know how it landed up in my archive of images that I inherited from my grandfather. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so this is probably. So this is somebody that my grandfather must have photographed at some point in India. Your grandfather was a photographer. Well, amateur, but a great archive. Sure. Far okay. out as anything I'm sure I could do myself. Um, but yeah. really beautiful images. You still at it? So don't give up yet. Well, now I'll probably keep appropriating for a really long time. Right. Okay. Um, but what I decided, what I what I wanted to do was look at how women project themselves towards the camera mm -hmm. and how much they control of their own image, what they reveal, what they say, um, and how what kind of relationship exists between the camera and the subject, between the medium of photography and between the moment of making an image. So my interest wasn't so much in telling a particular story. I mean, I think, for example, we have very opposite approaches. There are pictures of my grandmother in that, of my mom, of my mother-in-law. It's all family. But it's not really. A, uh, it's not. It's, it's not, not a series a, of narratives. Exactly. It's not. Whereas well, India's work is actually. A, 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 yeah. I don't know if it's a narrative, but it's a. It's, it's a, actually it's a, a precise text. story yeah. that yeah. she's. You know, right. she's speaking about someone. I think I was speaking more about the medium mm -hmm. and about how we engage with photography and how the camera. Response to women and how women respond to the camera. Okay, if I may ask you just one one of these pictures, um, these roses and the snake. Yeah, that one gets me into quite a lot of trouble because no, there's no trouble. Different I, from the I'm just the curious, house. but wh why? That's the trouble. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, okay, I, well, I, I I can see why a woman snake. Right. 
<laughs> I knew you were going there with well, that. I kind of was going there to some degree myself. Um, I, mean, I, I thought I've the images horns with roses, but snake. I think it it detracts, but still. <laughs> I thought the images were, you know, poetic and quiet, and I wanted something to be a little less, maybe sweet in some ways, or a little more. Um, you talked about being controversial. I like this business of this very sensual, very beautiful, very womanly um, thing, which is flowers, right? We all associate oh, yeah. home okay. flowers, not the snakes, the flowers. Now the rule of thirds, my eyes are completely on the snake. <laughs> and see, I liked the little snake that kind of showed up out of nowhere and thought it, it, it created some kind of tension between how maybe we perceive women. So maybe women are looking at women like the flowers and men are looking at women no, like I'm the snake. I'm seeing the rule of thirds. My eyes just focus a, on, on the snake. Maybe a different crop. <laughs> who might have done it. Well, I think I like the idea that it broke up the monotony of, of straight portraiture and called okay. into question how you actually read an image, which is the major part of a person's interaction with photography. Miss um, Kurokal and Khaled is not here. And, uh, but there's this particular image which I really want to ask you about. Um, why, why choose this image? This is a woman completely covered. Uh, I won't even call it a veil. It's like a like yeah. a fabric. Why this one? It is about her own life. These are self portraits. Oh wow! Okay. And she went through a phase in life where she felt like hiding away. And she explained her work. She explains her work really well in this. Okay. And I had a long chat with her when she finished it because mm -hmm. I thought it was quite interesting that she had. It's 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 all negative. She's been through a patch of disability when she was born mm -hmm. and then uh, struggled a lot in her childhood. And um, even her choice career path was a bit difficult for her to get on to. So um, I really like that image. I think that uh, it says more than uh, what other people are willing to say about themselves. Mm -hmm. I think we all hide at times. Okay, the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to build on that, on that uh, comment. Do you think it's a cultural thing? Um, because I feel a lot of anchors when I started in the media business, and um, I think it was my wish too, and, and ask any anchor, especially um, people not doing current affairs, who is your ambition, Oprah? And I've always said Oprah is not Oprah because she's Oprah. Oprah is Oprah because she's an American. She could never be Oprah in England. I think culture is overplayed. I think human emotions are uh, open. But Americans are just very open. They're, they're willing to share their personal stories. I'm invoking this because you've talked about this image. Um, but as a people, Pakistanis, Asians, I'll go beyond Pakistan, Asians are very protective of who they are. They don't actually, people don't tell true stories. They, they would obviously always hide a bit. It's about getting a platform. Oprah got a platform. Um, so I don't, got don't think about being judged. Which is why I said I want to thank Iran for this because if I would not have been given this opportunity mm -hmm. to, to do something and to push myself and to observe my grandmother, she lives with me. I've lived with her like 28 years of my life. I've never photographed her as much as I have since I started working on this project. Um, so I think it's really about either creating a platform or finding a platform where you can speak up or where you can express yourself or where you can be yourself. But aren't we protective Can because of the fear? Of uh, absolutely. There's this work in here that came up, Yeah, which one? It's uh, Mavi Shizri. Okay. Yeah. Go on. I'll, I'll find it. When we started working on this book, we started working on it in June 2012. Right. We lost two girls. Gained two girls, I mean, oh, it was okay, a right. journey. Right. In December, we lost one girl. Well, we didn't lose her, but I wasn't very happy with her work. And, okay. Um, obviously, none of them knew who the nine girls were until they were confirmed. Okay. So we kept Fine. that Fine. like a, a blind copy on the emails until Fine. it was all done because I don't want anyone turning and say, oh, I could have been a part of something. That's okay. So, um, and the day I lost that girl, we didn't have anyone. I wanted to launch this book on the 3rd of January and not on the 9th of March. And um, this girl came to me for an interview for marking okay. as a graphic designer. I asked her to show me her work and she showed me her thesis work. This is her thesis work. And it revolves around inauthenticity. So I'm going back to what we were talking about. that We culturally don't speak up. And if you look at the first page, it's called Constant Bad Faith. Yeah. 
and I tried to make her change her title. I don't try to tell people what sure, to do. Sure, sure, sure. So I said, are you sure that bad faith is constant? And she said, well, I know a lot of 60 and 70 years old who managed to do nothing about that. Either. But this wow. is a 22 year old who she's uh, the youngest fell in love with her work. It talks mm -hmm. about the inauthenticities that we tend to take on and adopt for the society. And I don't think it's the uh, sometimes even if you have a platform, it takes a lot of courage. Yeah. People ask me, you know, if you have education, you can be a successful woman. If you have a skill set, you can be successful. I think success is determined by its courage and nothing else. I have a, I have a penchant love for getting myself into trouble, so I'm about to do that. I think that's okay. I like. Uh, I, I, I'm too blunt for my own taste. But anyways, uh, the the sweets. This is Mahesh um, Rizvi's um, work, and she. Uh, the sweets. Um, according to him, bad faith is when a human being, under pressure from society, conforms to adopt false values and disowns his or her innate freedom to act authentically. The drapery in my photograph symbolizes an authenticity and the absence of the face, this is where I'm going to get into trouble, absence of the face in the series signifies the unidentified self. We are so completely surrounded by inauthenticity that we cannot resist acting in bad faith. In effect, we have forgotten our essence. I want you to show this image and now I'm going to get myself into trouble. Uh, a very, very um, famous artist of Pakistan had his exhibition. And God, I'm really going to upset three people. And this is easy 12, 13 years ago. And I went to the gallery and I saw 100 pictures of women with horses. And all these women were faceless. And as I was leaving, I, I was reading the guest book, and people were saying, censors, bold. And I just looked at these people, and I said, he's painted faceless women with horses. It's a woman with no identity, nothing but a beast of labor, or an item of pleasure. And you're taking pride in that? And obviously upset people, and I've repeated that in 12 years, and I'm going to get hate mail. Why? I mean, this is fantastic. She's talked about the, the, the authenticity. That's also part of us. You this, never. This I agree with completely. Yeah. This I agree with completely. But the inauthenticity is very, very deep rooted here. I'm glad you, your, all your work has yeah. fought that. Um, so I'm going to come back to my point that we, as a people, don't like to open up. And again, coming back your work and all the other works, this has opened, opened people up. What kind of reactions do you get when you show it to people from the earlier generations? I'll tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, I want to hear that. Please. Well, um, I showed it to, to people and they, um, they both thought it was a trigger. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Every, every photographer was saying something to them. Yeah. Now you see, when I saw Insya's work, I really, really wanted it in the book because I felt it was a trigger for me. Mm -hmm. And when in the middle she tried to back out and she's like, I'll give you Chitrali women instead. And I was like, no, it's either Dadi Jan project or nothing else. <laughs> and I said, I want your Hello, Dadi Jan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, no, we can't take this away in your father's letter. Because I feel the letter, without the letter, yeah. the, the, the photography, oh, yeah, absolutely. the story is incomplete. And I feel uh, the, uh, like, sorry, coming back to your question, people from the previous generation, it's a trigger. It's the things that they were not able to do or the journeys they could not live uh, because of their inauthenticities or lack of freedom or um, choices. I feel that a lot of pressure is put on the, or a lot of importance is given to financial independence mm -hmm. that today women have and maybe then women didn't. Yeah. But I think that um, I know a lot of women today who are educated, who are highly educated, have no lack of funds or monetary issues and they still choose to live an authentic life. I mean, I for one am someone who is also single and divorced and I had no money and I still did it on my own. 
So, but you haven't chosen to live an inauthentic life. I didn't. But what I'm saying is, you don't need. I have no degree. I okay. have no money. Ah. So what you're saying? All right. So, so you're saying you you don't fit into the typical profile. I'm saying there is no typical. These are all stereotypes that have been ah. built by society. Uh, I'm going to. I I need to write this uh, <laughs> because I need to take a short break. Uh, but when, when we. Uh, uh, when yeah, we when we come back, if I can back. do it, anyone can do it. I have there's nothing special about. It. One woman who I gave this book to, you know what she said? She said this is phenomenal. You know, it's impossible to create work like this, which it is. I didn't create this work; these girls did. And the fact that it all came together at the end of nine months and it looked like this is a miracle because nobody saw each other's work. Now you're saying it took nine months to compile this. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Nine years, nine, nine, so nine, 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 <laughs> and she said, yes, I did. I said, I'm happy to be that boy. <laughs> I'm proud to be. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we talk about inauthenticity, the lack of freedom, the typical stereotypical persona of Asian woman. Let's take a short break. Thank you for staying with us. You're watching Perspectives. I am talking about a book called Come to Fun, which means many things. But I, I think um, least said is probably uh, where I would like to take it. Or, or maybe, maybe saying a lot in, in the least amount of words. Uh, what's the song saying a lot when you say nothing at all? I wouldn't have to look. You say definitely no, nothing at all, of course. So I, I'd, I'd probably have to have to look, look at that. Nothing here. Not. No, no. Yeah, Roland <laughs> Keith. Mm. No. Oh, yes. No. He no. They they abused the song. But that was he sang it for Nothing Hill. I think. Yeah, for yeah, Nothing Hill. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah but the, the original yeah. song is. I, I need to start playing songs here. Uh, inauthenticity, lack of freedom, the typical stereotypical image. I want all of you to comment on that because the stereotypical image of Pakistani woman, and I want to. I'll, I'll, I'll focus on Pakistan even though the Indian Bangladeshi one is the same image, is you have to accept your husband, whatever he does, uh, is a janaza hi niklega, you leave your in-law's house dead. Why are you looking at me? I don't <laughs> know. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm opening it to all of you. I'm opening it to all of you. I've Not never you had a husband. <laughs> And, yeah. and you seem yeah. happy about that. <laughs> Very satisfied. Is this like anti man lobby? No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. Not at all. So you're all right, yeah. people, okay. Yeah. No, all right, people. No, no. <laughs> I'm safe, yeah. <laughs> you won't beat me up, that's what I Angela. That, that image is, has been projected yeah. globally. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that even now that value is being inculcated into the woman and thus maybe 20 years later the woman will not have changed and liberated herself? And again, I repeat, I don't want trouble. When I say liberated, I do not mean libertine. I do not mean that she should be out of control and ballistic. I just mean she should have the freedom to choose her life and to be who she wants to be. You have to be careful. A lot of hate mail. Um, do you think... Your work, all of your collective work, is helping women rethink who she is as you have maybe chosen. I do not know about your personal. I think it's going to take a while to get there. I don't see why inauthenticity has to be linked only to marriage. No, I, I, think, I mean generally. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's quite across the board and I feel that uh, I think each one can speak about their own work. Yeah. I think uh, what... Insha has done is something which is more than photography. She's actually brought in real life people sure. and a story and she's managed to get, you know, like uh, somebody sent an email to their mom after reading yeah. her book. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to be writing a letter to my mother anytime soon, but I think uh, I think it's a great idea. I think Why that would you not be writing that letter? 
ரிலேஷன்ஷிப்ஸ் <laughs> <laughs> and I, i i am hinting towards marriage but in our romantic relationships we are the most inauthentic because maybe we are not the most accepting of truth well i I'm, guess i'm deflecting from photography and no no of course yeah. um in a sense yes i do feel that initially yes we all do put up facades i mean of who we are mm-hmm. and we try to be but the, the point with this work especially is that we all of us have revealed something about ourselves that um it's like a platform we're all talking about something that we wouldn't generally have spoken about and we hope that other people do look at the work and kind of realize that you know it's it's better to be honest with yourself and with those around you rather than adopt false values and you know pretend to be someone you're not or or hide something because i guess honesty as they say honesty is the best policy which is an age old thing and but it actually does help you improve your relationships in one way or another because you can't expect someone to know you completely right if um by saying just like in says you know father and grandmother i mean there, there's something that's unsaid that's what happens in relationships and if we're honest and if we talk about it if we're open with each other it's, it's on a, on on a serious note you can't be honest with women <laughs> god you're making this book about just that No, I'm 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 But the moment you tell them honestly, how dare you say that? No, actually, no. No, no really. I've made sure that you, you know, don't know the right yeah, women. You don't know the right women. Maybe I know right. the right women. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we, I, am, I don't have any problem being the not right woman. Then. This book is about yeah. uh, the essence of a woman in a positive way. And the only negative thing in it is the constant bad state, which I feel that is your journey. You start yeah. with bad state, you learn. um you never really lose your inauthenticity mm-hmm. you keep living on and sure. keep living on shilani i want to come to you i i have always questioned the lack of um insightful art in our society um art that's controversial art that makes you think art that triggers you to reflect and to question mm-hmm. we are very um most of our even even our painters mm-hmm. they do very typical kind of work um they don't they don't go out of the box they they don't they, they don't take that risk right when you said controversial and um, you know and and experimental experimental um i really that that light went on i want to talk about it do you think our society where it stands today we have we have some core issues uh, mm-hmm. regardless of how how we present ourselves we have core issues so sure. do you think in the the way the art scene is now the photographers singers musicians do you think we are now triggering that alternate thought and will we be able to trigger that change for coming years or not well i think a healthy and you know dynamic art practice always includes some traditional work mm-hmm. that does get handed to you on a silver platter and is just sure. about you know the five second glance of being like oh i like it and that's beautiful or that's not but i also think there are a number of artists in all those different fields that you just mentioned that are doing things um that are a little bold that are a little outside the box and that are taking the risks where it's not simply about looking at a work and saying oh i get it or it's pretty but maybe looking at a work and seeing what it does in return to you and letting a kind of engagement happen that may not yield its fruit in 5 seconds and say right this is what i think but it might work on you it might come into your dreams it might change a thought you have it might come up in a conversation i think there's a great deal of that work happening now um especially because the art scene has whether it's exploded or imploded recently 
since at, it's you know gotten um, at the risk of uh, again you know, uh, the hate mail. I, don't you think that our um, our experimentation is happening only in technique and not necessarily in content? But sometimes also, I do. Also, we get confused with like the libertine being libertine. Mm -hmm. We would use nudity for the wrong reasons. We quickly become vulgar and forget what's nudity. Uh, I and and the images in the book which have done which have, which have done that very gracefully. Uh, yeah, I think I can. Um, these are images which have which have used the skin, if I may say, very very gracefully. Mm -hmm. And I I can actually show this on PTV, so which means it is very graceful. Um, but don't you think that we are not actually experimenting with content? We're only experimenting with technique. Well, I don't. I wouldn't be. I would be reticent to just say that as a blanket kind of statement. Generally but, speaking. But I would agree with the idea that a great deal of, you know, people get stuck easily. It's, it is true that there are a lot of the experimentation is in technique and not necessarily yeah. conceptual. And even as a teacher, that's kind of my big beef um, with photography. I have a number of students who are saying that they're going to do something new and terribly innovative and it's all about using HDR or using some exactly. clever trick to make their cool photos, but it's not really about what they're thinking. And interesting artwork, I think, is about finding a balance between using your craft and using your technique in whatever way you'd the like. The storytelling somehow lacks a little. Also, when I say storytelling, telling, not just telling the story of he. Sure. I'm, I've heard that a hundred times. But telling a story which is not real, and that's making me wonder, huh, where did that story come from? Well, I think it's the real stories that are harder to tell and harder to receive. Um, I think mm -hmm. those are the ones where people don't quite know how to respond. And actually, the comment you made earlier about we're kind of private or we're protect yeah. ourselves a little more, I think that's true to some degree. And in my own practice, just for a moment, I'll say what I've struggled with a great deal in the reception of my work is that I tend to do exactly that. I tend to try and speak about the things that most people don't speak about. And that might not be so visible in this particular body of work, but it's hard to find that balance between concept and technique and the balance between making artwork that is uh, relevant to a whole bunch of people or a few people that can look at it and really engage with it and feel challenged by it or feel enriched by it in some way. Yeah. Uh, what I was referring to about, about two years ago, I saw an, I think, three years ago, I saw in a, a press ad of a shoe where there was a lot of bare leg and hardly a shoe. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... Well, that's advertising for you. Yeah, yeah but you see, the bare leg could lead to the shoe. It wasn't even leading to the shoe. Yeah, but you've seen advertising like that for decades now, not in mm -hmm. years. I mean, you I have mean, the ad for the lipstick and it's a picture of hair or an ankle. <laughs> yeah, but the <laughs> lipstick should be there somewhere. Um, <laughs> This uh, this image um, is what I'm referring to is a fantastic image by Mavish, right? Yes. Um, and the loftiness, the floating, the veil, and there is nudity to some extent. What? Uh, as as uh, well, there's a body. I don't know if there's nudity. nudity. There's I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the. I'm talking about the. I'm talking about the. No I'm perfect. You're. This about book the, is a trigger for people from this generation also. I'm talking <laughs> about the norm. I'm talking about the norm. People would say, "Oh God, That's nudity." True. What I'm saying is that this is the right kind of exposure which is making me look at her out of balance stance. Mm -hmm. about, there's just so much happening in this image, her balancing. Please. There's no such thing as the right kind or the wrong kind. I think it's really perception. And I think as photographers and as artists, I think I would never call someone else's work bad photography. It's just photography. Whether I like it or not like it, what meaning... I have of it as opposed to the thoughts that the photographer had while creating that image. They're two different things. Um, and it differs from person to person. It's a medium and it's how you use it. Uh, Kiran could have taken out a book that could have been t about totally something totally different from sure. what she explored, but she let us explore ourselves, I think, more mm. through this process as opposed to you know, really giving us a theme yeah. mm -hmm. that, you know, okay, create something that reflects a woman. There was like, no there was, there was no brief. There was just like, what? how would you perceive something? So it really was my translation of what I feel is the essence of a woman, which for me was my grandmother. For her was her, her grandmother or 
you know, old archive images, but her work is totally different from from mine, you know. So it's really, it's, it's, it's a different meaning. It's just the medium that's coming together, I suppose. Uh, there was a time when men ruled this field. Asif, Zahir, Tapu, and they were the yeah. gods of photography. Rehan was not here, Rehan so was, was left the country. The gods of photography. Do you think that, that They're kingdom... They're still the gods, aren't they? Sorry? They're still the gods, aren't they? Are they? Aren't they? Are you tell me. <laughs> But they're senior photographers. Yeah, yeah. But we also had so Ruha. Is, yeah, very senior. But we had Ruha Ghaznavi. Yeah. And uh, she was one of the first who did mainstream commercial work. I worked with her also. But I, like I said, it's not about women. Um, I've done a book with Tapu, with Arif, and with Amin J. Arif, of course, Akhra figured out. Yeah, yeah Arif and was it. And Amin J. Yeah. But uh, what people did not know is that there are nine, there are actually more than nine. We lost three along the way, so that's mm -hmm. 12 for you and then many more female photographers in Pakistan. I, I'm, I'm tempted to do this. I mean, hi, I mean, John. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's not happy about that with me. <laughs> okay, now, what's next? Where do you think the, the photography and the art scene uh, from the women's perspective is going in Pakistan? What, what, should, what should we expect? What sort of work do you think is going to come out in the coming years? See, I'm... I don't... I don't like to think about work necessarily being gender based. Like I, I find it very distressing yeah. if I like if, you. If an artist or, thanks. <laughs> if an artist or a photographer or anybody's being told, Okay, you're a woman, therefore your work should be woman centric and while this is a really great project, it would be very dangerous to read it in the terms of it of it only as a woman centric project. Because that would diminish its potential meaning, its range, its scope. It would just make it women that are looking at women and I it would make really it really like you. <laughs> I stand corrected. I, I concede. And I'll tell you why I'm repeatedly saying that. I've always had serious issues about laws being made for women, mm -hmm. about women empowerment. Mm -hmm. about I don't like it. Like she mentioned, we're not feminists here. No, but this is nothing to do with feminism. It's about when you, when you say, when you say gender-based things, you are identifying you're that you are a unique entity. Yeah. And you need you need hands and I think you? men are far superior to women. I, I, I don't oh, open up this <laughs> Oh no, I think he's gonna get into trouble. I like you, but <laughs> but stop lying. <laughs> <laughs> superior at what? No, yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right, I thought so. That was a leading statement. Yeah, I think that there's no such thing as man, woman. I think yeah, everybody's yeah. fine the way they are. Okay, now I want to take it to a, to 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 a, a direction where why do we have the branding mm -hmm. that makes us do these shows and have these conversations? Where have we as a people failed in our branding globally? Why are we seen as the gender issue and the women are less empowered and uh, women don't do anything? Whereas, the more I do the show, um, I've been doing current affairs for years, which is only for a few weeks outside doing this, I find more and more women who just do fantastic work, better work than men probably. And again, jokingly I say the gender thing, but generally women are really doing well in the society. Of course, there is a there is a there is a stratum where women may be not doing so well. Mm. But generally speaking, our women are very capable. They are not being beaten down by the society. They're working. So where's the branding? And again, I would like to keep this book in focus because this book does project a different image, a different brand. So where do you think? And like all of these comments, that where do you think our branding has gone wrong? As a nation? As a nation, yeah. Exposure? I don't we've know. We've allowed the wrong stories, not the wrong stories, but we've... The wrong information. We've allowed the wrong stories to be told. We've allowed certain stories to be told repeatedly again and again and, and again. And not countered it. And we haven't countered it enough. And if there's an effort to counter it, it is projects like this. And there are and shows like yours where you are receiving women that are giving alternate stories um, or just to get women, people that are, you know, telling <laughs> different stories. Um, and maybe that's the work that's cut out not only for us, but for not, and not only other emerging societies, but for everyone is that there's always a mainstream story, right? And sure. it always is full of cliches. It's full of untruths. It's full of things that are easier to sell, market, pitch, repeat, you know, brainwash people with, it's harder to tell the alternate stories. stories. Um, 
And I think it's the real work that we all have cut out for us. Is the is your alternative story being told enough or not? I understand it's harder to tell. Mm-hmm. But are enough people, are, do you think we're doing a fair job at telling us the story? I think we are. I think we're trying. I think, we are. I think it's, it's, it's yeah. improving. People, Over yeah. the last few yeah. years, you know, several And I think it's more about it. accepting that. I think more people now need to, like, I think the step, like the moving onwards would be to understand what's really happening um, and if you're doing a show and if, if there's a book like this coming out that people need to understand what it's supposed to mean and, and take it forward as opposed to keep going back because I think we have a tendency of going back and talking about the same thing and not really moving forward yeah, as much. Letting go of the past. I think we all have that issue. We've had yeah. Yeah. a yeah. video. You've talked about that you do videos. We, uh, are we telling good stories in videos? Actually, yes. There there are a number of people that are actually making things that you wouldn't expect. Um, I'm not very good with names, but just sure. even off the top of my head, someone like Mahir Omar, who does short documentaries, has gone into Balochistan with the off-roaders and told those. Yeah, stories. And yeah. they're, they're beautiful. They're fun. They're full of life. They're, they yeah. show gorgeous uh, landscapes in the country. We have... We, I think we have video works, especially now with this very kind of young generation, they're learning that they can voice, they can give voice to their ideas and their thoughts and their opinions in video in a way that they can't do otherwise. And it's actually a very accessible medium. So if you have a story to tell, you can do it sitting in front of your computer, you can do it on your cell phone and upload it to Vimeo or YouTube. I actually think um, video is one of the mediums in which people are easily able to tell the other stories. Social media. What about it? Video, photography, imagery, Pakistan, mm-hmm. branding, all those things. How do you feel social media should be used by our current generation, the young, vibrant generation? I think it needs to highlight the positive. Mm-hmm. I think it already is. Um, I, I, I tweeted I something the other day. I, 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 no, I, love, no. I love being positive. I love saying everything's good. But <laughs> no, you know what? Social yeah. media no. No, not is actually all, full of a lot of no, nasty there, there's a bit of both things. Like we have like, I mean, there's th- different, let's say, groups on Pinterest, for example. Sure. Sort of thing, and they have like a Pakistan page where people are just posting beautiful images of Pakistan, beautiful things, you know, things that they find every day, relatable stuff. So there is a little bit that's going on, just not, I guess, enough of it with that extreme energy, I would say. Can I like take this somewhere else since we've been talking about gender? Please. There's something I tweeted maybe a year ago. Uh, Pakistan, India recognized uh, the transgender and gave them the rights to vote a year ago. We recognized it three years ago. India celebrated it. The whole world found out about it. You know how to celebrate. Okay. We did it three I years did it ago. The market. They did it three years it's ago. A... We did it, sorry, three years ago. Yeah. India did it a year ago. But, but the world, well. they must. because they want to show the positive side of their country, it suits their agenda. Their agenda that's fine. <laughs> it should be their agenda. Yeah. And it's highlighting so much, highlighting the positive of our country does not suit our agenda. I think it is that is why I do not watch television. <laughs> that was a, that not. was a heavy statement. Yeah, it was yeah. Just, it, it, it's, it's very true. Um, I don't think uh, half the things you, you see on TV are true. I don't think half the things you speak are true. That's why I like watching talk shows. I don't want to watch the news. I don't want to know what's happening in Pakistan because uh, I know when it happens, really. Something like that. <laughs> when it's worth knowing, you will know. Yeah. Someone will tell you. What. Um, you said they know how to celebrate. They do. Yeah. Uh, oof. Do, you, do you think we... And this has nothing to do with photography, gender, nothing. Do you think we as a people have s- sort of not, we don't laugh enough? No, we don't. We don't celebrate I enough. Laugh, no. <laughs> I, I think we generally, as a nation, we don't celebrate enough. I think, we, just, I think, we, just, I think we kind of, we get lost in translation, we get lost in who's doing what, insecurities, uh, yeah, egos, and they just hate so there's many a lot things. Of, there's no yeah. love like, competition. There's no yeah. love for the other person yeah. or general celebration of if something good happens. It's, 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 I mean, there's a lot of and negativity. When like this happen, it's called the softer image of Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. As, as if there's a harder image. Yeah. <laughs> I really like you guys. Thank you. We yeah. think like, as if there's a harder image. Yeah. 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 Just softer image. Do we have a hard image as well? Yeah. 
But do we have a bad side? Where is the bad side? Closing notes before we before we wind up. What would you like to say before we leave? Well, I hope that um, this work that we we've, we've, we've been talking about on the show and everything does. Um, let's say increase and ask people to actually open up to uh, be more liberated to talk more about themselves and um, to take more chances in life to do things so finally after that, that yes we we need to speak out more but we need to also accept what people of course yes criticism don't no, don't no, run no. after people with, with no no with, none with of the you know i what i'm that that's one of the biggest problems you know it's it's we don't it's we don't do that to each his own sort of a thing it's like you know if i said something yes i'm right and that's it nobody else can be right but we don't listen when i when i said that you know we, we don't open up i got lost in, in conversation that's my because the other person would judge you so hard exactly that you go like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you would rather be like let's not get yeah, whatever <laughs> talk to that <laughs> close your notes uh, shale what would you like to say um you want to come back to me? I don't have any closing notes ready. That's fine. Right. <laughs> you want me to come back to you? Yes, please. <laughs> Great. And see what would you like to say? Um, just that I, I one, I, I wish we learned how to celebrate. Um, I think through this book, I'm celebrating uh, my relationship with my family, uh, my grandmother, my God father, bless. and um, I hope that we can take this work to places. Um, that's next. Well, um, this is going. I don't think this is stoppable. Yeah. This is going to go. So forward. hopefully, we'll all, as individual photographers, we keep like working on these projects and and growing okay. on them, and and maybe make them um, travel. So so now I have to like back. start a dialogue. Come back. <laughs> I don't know if I have. To. You okay. can hold. Just take the cue from me. <laughs> Yes, closing eyes. Nice. Thank you. And <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, I truly feel that everybody's work. You had something to say, and you saw something exactly what Shalala's work. It's about how you engage with the yeah. work, right? Okay. And I think that you saw something that said a lot about you. Uh oh. I'm just, just messing with you. Uh oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Everything says something. Like what I saw in Shalala's work, or Adila's work was something probably something something completely different to what you saw. Of course. Right? And I went on to talk about Mahavish's work and you were intrigued by the 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 level of artistry or sure. you know, you thought that there was subtle nudity and that is very acceptable on P T V. That's what you said. I can show it. I now. just said it call it new uh, just for the record, I call it nudity to make it make it understandable. Yeah. I do not consider that nudity. That's yeah, nudity. yeah. I know. But what you said that um, this is good work to come out yeah. there. It is acceptable to show it on a yeah. on a Pakistani. We're television. showing much worse. Uh, we're showing vulgarity. Yeah, and that is just meaningless. Yes, skin, which yes. is you no. Know, that's a no no. I, I, I know you said there's no good and bad. Yeah. I feel there is a bad. Uh, at times, now you I was actually <laughs> just going to bring it back down to something that's closer to me because I'm not sure how to talk about the larger issues. What I think is really exciting is that there's photography being published. Fantastic. And I think there should be more publications of of photographic work. And there's been a real challenge and a real struggle to get photography accepted as um, a medium wow. within the arts. Fantastic. I think that's wonderful that that's happening. And I hope that we see much more work by really diverse range of photographers, much more publishing. Yes. yes. So those if are my, my, my closing way, thoughts. I would only publish photography books. But I don't have my Godspeed. way. Godspeed. Because I need May to have the I do book, books. I mm. book got nominated by an international award. Phenomenal. Yeah. This book is not for sale. Find her, email her, harass her. I'm keeping this one. <laughs> but if you want one, you would have to talk to Karen. Thank you very much, all of you. Lovely book. Thank Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, until next time. Good night.